why this title? Why Maple Tree Industrial Trust versus Keppel DC REIT? Now, if you don't really know, Maple Tree Industrial Trust is keen to move more and more into data centers, and Keppel DC REIT, of course, already is in the data centers. Now, let me pull this up for you to see. This is actually by Facebook. They're investing $1 billion to build a data center in Singapore. But Facebook is a tech company. All other players in the market, they are not tech players. They're actually doing more and more outsourcing. And let me pull up this chart actually ducked up for Maple Tree Industrial Trust. It shows you that more and more outsourcing is being done, being actually helped by cloud computing in data centers itself. And that's why a lot of data center reads are actually developing all around the world. Today, a few discussion points. The first, I'll touch on 5G and cloud computing. I only have a layman understanding, but I'll share with you as much as I know on it to let you understand the mega trends underlying. The second part I'll touch on is Maple Tree Industrial Trust, of course, what it's doing, how come it's buying so many data centers. The third I'll touch on is Capital DC Read. What is its history and why is it moving forward? And lastly, I'll give you some conclusions because many analysts say these two companies are not cheap. Is it true or not true? Let's find out. Hi guys, welcome back. Now, if you've been following this channel, you'll know that I'm a finance guy. I'm not an engineer and neither am I like an IT guy. So as much as I can, I try to understand you know, how this whole concept of 5G data centers really works. So, I will try to break down as much as I can in simple terms for you. And just in case some parts are wrong, do correct me, leave them in the comment sections below. Now let's start things with what exactly is a data center. Let me pull this chart out for you to see. A few key parts. In a data center, it looks like there's going to be a lot of special cables. There's going to be a lot of fire proofing and there's going to be a lot of cooling equipment. Why? Because there's so much high speed computer running all over the place. And a cooling equipment is definitely necessary to remove heat to, pre to, to actually maintain high performance of supercomputers. Now, as you can see, a data center has certain unique features. I actually went to Google check a bit. It looks like it takes about one year to build up one data center. So it's, it doesn't take many years, but nonetheless, you cannot build it up overnight because these systems need to be in place. And last but not least, there's usually high security, high security within a data center itself. And as far as I know, Google for its data centers, they actually have you know, so much high level access before you can get it. It's like, it's like gold, it's like a treasure trove for them. So not everybody can go in and mess around in the data center. So it's very, very highly protected. Now, now let's move on to 5G. So what exactly should we expect from 5G? I mean, if you're a layman like me, you will be thinking like maybe it's faster downloads and stuff, but not only that. This actually helps you try to understand in 5G communication, yes, it's going to be faster. That's why we're going to see autonomous vehicles. We're going to see internet of things. There's so much data transmission, it's all backed up by cloud computing. How does cloud computing actually work with data centers? This chart perhaps gives you a picture. Now, as you may know, in 5G, there's so many devices talking to each, each, each moment, each split second. And everything is housed under a cloud computing system whereby they can actually increase and decrease the, you know, the bandwidth of things. And behind it, the backbone is data centers. That's why data centers are becoming so increasingly valuable. As you can see in this, which you mentioned by Capital DC Read, enterprise spending on cloud infrastructure is increasing more than 20% year on year. There's this high growth that's really backing this whole asset class up. And in the next part, I'll touch on Maple Tree Industrial Trust to start things running. Now, Maple Tree as a real estate brand has really won a lot of accolades. And with that, I'll start on the discussion for Maple Tree Industrial Trust. I'll pull up some previous data points for you to see its growth. Now, prior to 2018, they've actually acquired a 40% stake in 14 data centers in USA. Let me pull this out for you to see. And it's actually purchased from its sponsor, Maple Tree itself. And as we can see in this statement in 2018 May, it really has mentioned an investment mandate to acquire more data centers outside of Singapore. And at the point of time, as highlighted in green at the bottom, you realize that Singapore was its predominant exposure in terms of its portfolio. At the point of time, two years ago, portfolio value was only 4.3 billion. And all its data centers were in this segment called high-tech buildings. But later, I'll show you, it's really moving out more, more and more on its own as a segment itself. And what happened actually in September in 2019? Let me pull this up for you to see. This actually shows its acquisition path. And in September 2019, they did a major deal, a 1.368 billion US dollar deal. And this was actually buying data centers, 13 of them from this company called Digital Realty. If you don't really know, Digital Realty is the second biggest player for data centers and they are listed in USA. And so it's actually, you know, a data center firm selling to a data center read. And, you know, it's a willing buyer, willing seller. But nonetheless, this, this uh, price was transacted supposedly at fair value. 
and that digital realty supposedly feels that it's a good enough price for them to be cashing out. So Maple Tree Industrial Trust actually acquired these 13 data centers and with that, the total number has been boosted to 27 data centers in America itself, according to its mandate. And what happened in June 2020, they've also made a further announcement. You know, at the start of this segment, I actually mentioned they have 40% stake in 14 data centers. In June 2020, they are acquiring the remaining 60% from its parent company. And in this deal, they actually did a private placement at around $2.80. With that, they have actually boosted their portfolio further with more data centers itself. And as of now, let me circle this portion up. Data centers is so big until they can be a segment of the, at their own. They need not be within the high-tech building space. And right now, data centers are 39% of its portfolio. So with that, they've achieved that objective. They've also achieved diversification. Right now, you know, one third of it is already in America. So just to give you further information on what kind of deals, what kind of clients they have for the data centers in USA. I have this to show you also. Take note of this term, powered shell data centers, because most of their leases are in this kind of a state. And I've actually done some Google search on it. And this actually means that, you know, they actually just lease the building itself. Interior-wise, it's raw. The, the customer has to go and furnish it themselves. And from what I've read, you know, uh, HP, for example, is a major customer. They actually take up 8% of their leases. And probably HP being a sophisticated company knows how to build up the interior to fit what it needs. And with that, that actually is very different from how Kepler DC runs his business. In the next segment, I'll touch on the differences and with that, stay on for it. Now, if you have benefited, smash your like so that more people can see valuable content like this. Now, there are two main differences between Kepler DC Reed as well um, as compared to Maple Tree Industrial Trust. From the previous segment, I mentioned that Maple Tree Industrial Trust, the data centers are leased as a shell. But for Kepler DC Reed, they do more on the co-location lease. Now, let me pull this up for you to see. This is actually mentioned in their presentation. So 72.3% of its leases are actually co-location, which means they actually provide you know, equipment, they provide facility management, instead of just giving you know, their customers a building. I actually want to study a little bit further on what exactly is co-location, because you know, I'm not technical in it. And what it suggests is usually that they are to retail customers and that these leases are a bit shorter. So again, the, the customer, the clientele is different between Capital DC REIT as well as Maple Tree Industrial Trust. Now, the second difference between these two REITs is actually Capital DC REIT, most of its assets are actually in Singapore. But the good part is Singapore is actually Singapore, APEC's most competitive data center. So look at this report. That bodes well for Capital DC REIT. They have data centers in Singapore. There's a cluster in Tampines. And at the start of its IPO, they only had eight assets. But across the year, they have been growing, you know, acquiring buildings in Singapore and in Europe. So I have this chart to show you also. So the key parts, the, the key parts circled in yellow are very interesting points to elaborate further. These two highlighted in yellow actually is most recent acquisitions and one is in Australia, the rest are in Europe. And the curious part is how come they had to acquire assets, you know, overseas? There are no data centers in Singapore. This article actually uh, suggests so. So as is mentioned, highlighted in red, data centers are lacking in Singapore. Capital DC can't just go out and buy data centers to add to the portfolio to grow its dividends. So they actually have to rely on third-party assets. Its sponsor, Capital TNT, does not have assets right now to sell to them. Unlike Maple Tree, which has you know a lot of uh, data centers to pump into the the read itself, Capital TNT does not have that, and that's why they've approached third party to purchase assets. And but why is also highlighted in yellow? Also, is Capital. Uh, TNT actually has assets in Europe that are still not mature yet, but eventually they could mature and pump, be pumped into uh, Capital DC with itself. You know, in a previous video, I've actually touched on SPH and they're actually doing a JV with Capital Units. And my speculation, if you haven't seen that video, so go and follow that video, is that eventually you know, SPH may be able to sell their data centers to Capital DC with since Singapore is such a competitive market and Capital DC is so hungry for assets. So maybe that's an interesting point which we can discuss somewhere in future. Now, I've actually seen before analysts mentioning that both of these REITs are expensive. Their dividend yields are pretty low as compared to you know, other REITs listed in Singapore. And that's largely true. I'll show you some data points for it. And not only that, for Capital TNT, which is the parent company, the sponsor of Capital DC REIT, they've actually sold out certain units at $2.42. So that's you know, some perspective points. But nonetheless, let's pull up this chart for you to see also. The dividend yield indeed is low compared to many REITs listed in Singapore. They're about 3 to 4%, but nonetheless, 
this is a very resilient you know, real estate class. So whether it deserves that lower yield depends on your perspective. And not only that, the price to book value, which I've highlighted in gold and in red, is more expensive than most of its other listed uh, REIT peers in Singapore. But nonetheless, if we compare across different kind of REITs, that may not give you a full picture. Another way to look at things is to compare across its years, the dividend yield that it's been delivering to its investors across the year because they've been growing their dividends per unit steadily. For capital DC rate, as you can see in this chart, the dividend yield has always been hovering around 2 to 3 plus percent. What about for Maple Tree Industrial Trust? You realize that it's been hovering about 3 to 4 plus percent. So nonetheless, these, these, uh, these REITs have a lower yield, but they've always been growing their dividends per unit. The share price has always been climbing. So the dividend yield has always been this steady rate and investors have been satisfied so far. And to end this with, I've actually a company that's listed in USA to show you, you know, a perspective in terms of valuation. This is Equinix. And what you can see over here is the price to earnings of this company is so much higher. Its dividend yield is 1.46%. This is the biggest data center read in the world. And yet the yield that they deliver is so much lower than these two reads itself. So hopefully that gives you some thinking points as to whether they are good investments for you. Again, if you're not sure, always diversify. But today's discussion is about you know, data centers and its future prospects. And with that, hopefully I've given you good perspective. And again, if you haven't subscribed, if I need to smash on subscribe, I'll see you in a future video. Take care and goodbye.